Welcome back to Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm talking about an episode from season four, The House, where we first see the stained glass window from the Whitley House. If you're enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe and click on that notification bell and it'll let you know when I post another video. At the beginning of this episode, we see Jason is up on the second story of the house and he is up there placing a lightning rod. So once again, uh, the Waltons doing their own stunts. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't me up there yet again. John Boy is driving Grandma into town so that she can do some shopping. And it's been a while since she's been into town. And as he is entering the town, this would have been shot on the back lot of Warner Brothers in the area that we call Western Street, where we saw the sheriff's office and the bus depot and things like that. Um, as she uh, talks about the street that they're on uh, and John Boy theoretically turns a corner, we are now into the Midwest area of um, the studio. And this is part of a continuation of the street where uh, Kurt and Mary Ellen's house was and where Mrs. Brimmer's house was and where we saw the house that Jenny Pendleton was in. So this section of houses was used quite a lot during the show for, to represent different people's houses. In this case, we see the Whitley House and the Whitley House uh, has a sign being posted that it is being condemned. This gets grandma's attention. She has John Boy stop right away. The Baldwin sisters are also there. They stop and talk with them and they talk with the gentleman who's posting the sign. Basically, because of the deterioration of the building, it's been deemed that it is unsafe and is going to be torn down. Grandma is livid, as are the Baldwin sisters, because they talk about the amount of history that occurred for them when they were young in this house. And Grandma looks up at this stained glass window and she says she has special memories of this that she won't share because she says they're private. But they get this idea that they want to do what they can to help save this house. While Grandma and the Baldwin sisters have decided that they're going to initiate a petition and get all kinds of signatures to save the house, they return home to find out that Grandpa is very exuberant because he's got a job. And this job, although it doesn't pay, it pays in wood and lumber, that he has gotten a contract to tear down the Whitley house and he plans to save all this amazing wood that is in the house that can be repurposed for other jobs and things like that. So now we have this, this conflict between grandma and grandpa because they are on opposite sides of the demolition of this house that means so much to grandma. Adding another layer to this drama, John Boy is asked by the paper's editor to write an editorial about what's happening with the Whitley house. And when John Boy tells him about his grandparents being on the opposite sides of this story, uh, the editor thinks that's great because it means that he will write from a point of conflict and trauma and personal uh, connection to it and that those make the best editorials. Grandma shares with Olivia that, that the significance of the Whitley house is that she went dancing with Zeb there and it's the first place where he kissed her. And so she has all these special memories and she is heartbroken that grandpa doesn't seem to remember any of this. And to him, it's just an old house and you know, it's, it's history and move on. As John Boy's having a conversation with grandpa about the Whitley house and about the fact that he has heard uh, grandma and grandpa arguing a number of times now. I like how Harvey Laidman, the director, set up this shot, this crane shot as we are high up looking through this upper window of the of the mill and then we kind of push in so that and tilt down and we watch them from above for some time. Just a clever sort of a shot. I really enjoyed that. Um, and you also see within this scene between Grandpa and John Boy that initially John Boy is is cutting wood or sanding wood or something. Uh, then he goes on to be measuring and marking wood while grandpa is sanding a spindle. So uh, it's always great when there is activity and a sense of life in a scene. Uh, that just makes it seem more real. People rarely just do nothing while they're talking, especially in a situation like this where they have work to do. So the 
the conversation continues as the work gets done. But they also chose activities that didn't make noise. If John Boy had been running the actual saw blade the whole time, it would have made the sound very difficult. So in this case, he is doing something quieter and a little safer. John Boy comes out of the house to find Jim Bob <laughs> up in the tree house with a, a shotgun or a pretend shotgun or something. Uh, he's standing guard because he's hearing these stories about how people are tearing down houses and he's protecting his territory. I'm not sure if he thinks he's protecting the tree house from being torn down or the Walton house, but John Boy talks him into going over to the Whitley house with him. So John Boy and Jim Bob go to the Whitley house and walk through it. Jim Bob isn't sure he wants to go into this derelict house. He thinks it's kind of spooky and scary. But John Boy goes in and walks around and, and sees all the history within the house. He finds a place where uh, on the wall where it's marked different heights. As we often do when our children are growing, we have a place where we mark their the increase in their in their height as they grow. So as John Boy looks around here, he comes to the the realization of what his his editorial is going to be. Uh, so it's a very productive trip inside the Whitley house for John Boy. The subplot in this episode revolves around Jason at the Kleinberg Conservatory. They're uh, studying Haydn and his classical music. Uh, Jason is listening to the radio at home to listen to this music, and then he's trying to practice for this recital that he has been asked to do or told he's going to do with another student. It's going to be piano and violin. Uh, however, the family isn't really on board with listening to this classical music. They think it's kind of snoozy. Grandma feels that uh, she likes music that has a beat to it that you can tap your toes to and you can dance to as opposed to the classical music. Uh, so Jason is feeling like he is, just isn't getting the support for his music. Uh, at one point in class, he is practicing with his duet partner and it doesn't go well and he is criticized for having changed some of the chords and improvising and the professor sort of says this is not like some hoedown country hoedown where you can just improvise the chords you have to basically play what's written on the page and so he and his partner are in a bit of conflict about this. Grandma has brought out a piece of sheet music for Jason, asked him to play it because she's found it and it is it is part of her memories connected to the Whitley house. But Jason is, he's busy and he really doesn't want to take time away from practice to play this other song. But Grandma leaves it with him and says, well, it always makes me feel better. So keep it. And when you're ready and you need that, then you play it. So when it comes time for the actual recital and grandma is very discouraged because the petition has failed, they are going to tear down the Whitley house. And, but Olivia insists that grandma come with her to Jason's recital because it would mean a lot to Jason and he would want her there. So she does, she does attend the recital. And as Jason and his duet partner are getting ready to go out, Neither one of them has brought the music. The music was missing when they went to get it, so each thought that the other brought it. Turns out one of the other students took it to try and sabotage their duet because she felt that she should have been asked to do the duet, and she knows the duet by heart. His partner says that he can't play anything without the actual sheet music, so the only sheet music Jason has with him is this piece of music that Grandma gave him. So he says, all right, we're doing this. So they go out and rather than doing a Haydn classical piece, they do a Virginia classical piece, which is carrying me back to old Virginia. Jason plays his guitar and his duet partner plays the violin and it goes really well. And grandma is very moved by getting to hear this music played. And even the professor comes on board and says, okay, we will get back to the classical music. But in the meantime, perhaps, the two of you will play another classical Virginia piece, and so they do. John Boy reads his editorial out loud to the family, uh, and it's really, it's a very good editorial, and it shows both sides of the story, but Grandma's not happy with it because it just doesn't totally support her side of it, and uh, so John Boy's left with uh, a sense of 
being underwhelmed by the response to his editorial. At the end of the episode, Grandpa has been working on some secret project in the grandparents' bedroom, and he says when Esther comes home to send her in there, he wants to talk to her. So she gets home, John Boy sends her in there, and this is when we find out that Grandpa has brought the stained glass window from the Whitley house, and he has put it into the front window of the grandparents' room and that he does indeed remember everything about their time there. He remembers dancing with Esther. He remembers the kiss. And so Grandma is very moved to find out that indeed he hasn't forgotten any of it. And the two of them do dance together. It's a beautiful moment. And he talks about how uh, all of these pieces of wood are going to become part of the community the doors, the spindles from the staircase, all of that will live on through new buildings and parts of new buildings that will emerge. So the future will be part of this Whitley house. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. I will be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy and, you know, probably some more special guests. Thanks for watching.